Yeah, Duncan emailed me, and I don't think I replied. <laughs> and then he phoned me. And the reason why, it wasn't just that I was busy. I think I was genuinely not sure. And, and I was trying to work out why that was the case. And the reason for it is, is that I'm a scientist um, who's, who studies the planet. That's what I do. My interest is in how the planet works. And um, I've not really been a big eco-warrior. I don't tie myself to trees and, and things like that. I've, I've not... Uh, but uh, my stuff's earthquakes and volcanoes. That's mainly what I work on. And, so, and But when I started doing the, the power of the planet, of the power of the planet, um, there were several moments where I got to places and it, it just struck me that oh my God, this is actually happening. I'd read the research papers, I'd gone to conferences and heard people talk, but there's nothing like going and um, I mean, either seeing something or hearing some, from someone tell you this is happening and this will change. Someone who you really know is, it's true. Um, I'll give you an example. We went out to Greenland and we went up to the, the Greenland ice sheet. And you know, that, in that series, if you saw, I was doing all these macho things where we were to camp on the top of the Greenland ice sheet and it was freezing. And I was sitting in my tent going, oh my God, this is miserable. I just want to go home. And the guys I was with do that every summer and they spend six weeks in tents up on top of there. And they've been doing that for 30 years. <coughs> and all they're doing is collecting temperature data and data on the, the flow, the melting, they're interested in how the Greenland ice sheet's melting. And what it, what it dawned on me, whether well, these are the same people that I'd heard, people who are kind of skeptical on the climate <coughs> thing, saying, these scientists are just in it for the money. They've got an agenda, it's part of a conspiracy. They work for the government, you know. And I was thinking, why, and I would not go and live in a tent on the Greenland ice sheet. And all they were doing was collecting the temperature and precipitation, just to get a baseline. And then when, we did, when I finally did leave and we went down and I was in a comfortable hotel nearby and I took a wander up round the corner and you see Iceberg Alley and it's, 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 it's a place where the Yucatan Glacier is coming down from the green ice sheet and it's melting and it's gone back really fast. And it, there was something in one of the papers that had been mentioned, it said this might not, this might not be here in 50 years. And to, to sit there or to stand there and think, well, maybe my kids will see this, but my kids' kids will probably not see this natural wonder. It was really quite dramatic. I remember getting a bit, uh, you know, kind of lumped the throat and thinking, oh my gosh, hey, forget that, you know, just get that out of your system. It's... But there are moments when you see it. And the other one, I, I um, was out in, Green, uh, out in Siberia. And if you, if those of you sort of think it was me getting my eyebrows burned <laughs> off by methane bursting out of the, the, the tundra. And it wasn't so much that, that was amazing. But it was a frozen lake and the methane comes out and the point is that this stuff is leaking into the atmosphere and methane is 23 times more powerful a greenhouse gas and it's something that's really not taken account of even in most of the climate models. It wasn't so much just that, it was getting in a plane afterwards and then flying for three hours across lake after lake after lake after lake after lake and realising oh, the scale of this thing and I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. But what can we do? Um, the reason why I, I hesitated was because where is the point where scientists say enough is enough with the data? We know enough. The data is consensual now. 90% of scientists believe it's happening. There's arguments around the edges about models and how bad it will be, but 90%, 95% of scientists. Um, at what point does a scientist stop analysing the data to the nth degree and then kind of stand up and say, right, I'm going to go and campaign about this, I'm going to go and talk about it. And that was the dilemma I was in at that point. I believed it was happening, um, but I was still quite reticent about standing up and saying, talking in a place like this and saying, I, you know, my stuff's earthquakes and volcanoes. I don't know climate change. But the point is, um, I do believe it, and therefore I think there are points when you, you do have to make that change. And Duncan had a, an experience with, where he stepped across the kind of line and or put his head above the parapet. And, you know, this is kind of today, I suppose, in many respects, is, is mine. Why, why kids? Why do it this way? I've got kids and I could play that, that wine. It's very emotive, the, the, the images, and, and I think that works and it's genuine and things. But there's another reason why I think the, the children aspect is absolutely crucial. It, it, for me, it isn't quite so much about handing the planet over to the next generation, because every, every generation can say that. The point for me is that out there, those buses and cars that are chucking out carbon dioxide, 
That's not warming the environment here because that's going to take time. There's a lag time of several decades for carbon dioxide. That stuff, that fumes that are coming out now, is going to warm the atmosphere of your kids when they're in their 30s. And that's the point, that what the atmosphere that's warming now wasn't shoved out by us, it was shoved out by our parents' generation. Um, and that's the point, that we are putting out stuff ever-increasing now, which we don't have to deal with, because we'll be dead. Um, but our kids and their kids will have to deal with it. And the longer we wait, the, the more important that is. So I echo something that, that Duncan says, which is I think we should strip through all this stuff about what are we doing this for. What we are doing this for is because we want, um, our, we, we value the way our society works and the way we live, and we want that to continue for our children and not for them to have a, an impaired future.